ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثا محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثه بدعه and everything we invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعه ضلاله and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray and every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we constantly need to do, we remind one, our, uh, one another, ourselves, myself first and foremost, and you as well, of certain topics that destroy an individual. And then there's repercussions that go on to the family, the community, and the ummah at large. Allah said, وَذَكِّرْ فِئْنَ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind one another, because indeed, reminding one another benefits the believers. May Allah make us from the mu'mineen. This topic that we should remind ourselves with is the topic of al-ghadab, of anger. The source of anger is shaitan. And Allah, He told us, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوْ That shaitan is to you an open, avowed enemy. He is not hiding. Satan wants you to fail miserably. And he's coming after you in any way. In any way possible. And one of those ways that's so easy to get you to slip into his path is by getting angry. Allah says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِينْ هِيَ أَحْسَنْ Allah says what well, means the good and the bad. Deed cannot be equal. So repel the evil with good. Repel the evil with that which is better. Allah, He ordered the believers, the faithful believers, to be patient at times of anger and to excuse those who treat you badly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْبَرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْدُ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنَ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says, describing who the muhsineen are, who the good doers are, the ones whom He loves. He says they are those who give in Allah's cause, wealth from their wealth, alms and sadaqah and the likes of that. In times of prosperity, when money is good and you feel comfortable, when you give in times of adversity, when times are ones of struggle and you fear for the next day. And those who control and repress their anger, and those who pardon and forgive mankind, forgive others, these are the muhsineen whom Allah loves. They repress their anger and they forgive and they pardon mankind. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُّرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَدَرِ this hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the strong one is not the one who can win at a boxing match or a wrestling match. The strong one is not the one who can overcome people by his physical strength. But the strong one is the one who controls himself while in a fit of rage, while getting angry. Thumma, 
ذكرنا في حديث رجل أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال له أوصني and we remind ourselves of the hadith of the man who came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said أوصني advise me now the Prophet وسلم, he could have advised him with 5001 things but the man said أوصني counsel me advise me give me something فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تغضب فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب the man said okay advise me don't get angry said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said okay advise me again again the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said do not get angry advise me again again he said do not get angry so my dear brothers and sisters in Islam we should realize the evil of anger and how much it has taken over every one of our lives in some sort and that we should get a control of it before it controls us. So what should we do when we're angry? And you would think that we would rush to do this, but subhanAllah, when we're angry sometimes, we don't want the solution. We just want to let our rage rip. We want to be angry. We want to let it out. And you don't want to use what's in the sunnah to control it. Sulaiman ibn Sarq, he said, I was sitting with the Prophet وسلم, and two men were slandering one another till one of them became red in the face and his veins and his neck stuck out. So the Prophet he said, إِنِّي لَأَعْلَمُ كَلِمَةً لَوْ قَالَهَا لَذَهَبَ عَنْهُ مَا يَجِدْ لَوْ قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ The Prophet he said, I know a word or a sentence. If this man were to say it, it would cause him to relax and to calm down. If he truly realized where his anger was going, if he truly realized the source of that ghadab, the source of that heat and that anger was none other than shaitan himself, then he would truly relax if he said it and he meant it, saying, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the outcast. So they said that to the furious, furious man. And he said, don't you hear what the Prophet ﷺ is saying? And the man exclaimed, I am not mad. Yet when we get angry, most of us don't want to say it. Even if someone's getting angry and we advise them, say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم they don't say it with the conviction and the truth that they know that they need to seek refuge with Allah. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, if a man gets angry and seeks refuge with Allah from shaitan by saying, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, his anger will go away. When you're angry, as much as it takes, how many khutb, how many hadith have we narrated about controlling the tongue? Keep silent. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليسمت وفي رواية أو ليسكت The Prophet ﷺ, he said, if you believe, whoever believes in Allah on the last day should say what is good or be silent. Should say what is good or do not speak. Just implementing something like this, if we could only do it, how much better our lives would be how less fragile relationships that we're in would be. How much harm, less harm we would have done. If we could just shut our mouths sometimes. But no, it's so important to get out my word. For me to finish on top. For me to let the other one know that I will not be controlled by them or, or talked down to by that person. As if they're your Lord. The Prophet وسلم, he told us, very clearly to control our tongues. Most people when they're angry, they say what is sinful. They say something they cannot take back. They say something of insult. Some, they curse their own selves or their own parents. Some say words of kufr. Some, because of their anger, they divorce their wife every other day. Some wives, because of their anger, they ask their husband for a khuda every other day with no due, true reason. So we must be mindful of this. Control your tongue. Tie it. This, tie it. And restrain from speaking something before you can't take it back. When you're angry, you should know that what was advised for us is to sit down or to lie down. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, إِذَا غَضَبَ أَحَدَكُمْ وَهُوَ قَائِمْ فَلْيَجْلِسْ فَإِنْ ذَهَبَ عَنْهُ الْغَضَبُ وَإِلَّا فَلْيَطَّجِعُ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, If any one of you becomes angry, then let him, and he is standing, then let him sit down. 
and his anger will go away. And if it doesn't go away, then let him lie down. When you're on your feet, you're capable of doing many things to fuel that anger and keep it going. So we have a prescription if you're angry, sit down. It's one of those things here where you say, you're ready for some bad news? You tell the person, are you sitting down? SubhanAllah, it's from our sunnah. That if you're angry, standing, sit. If you're sitting and you're still angry, lay down. And this will cause the anger to go away bi ta'ala. Many of us get out of control. Rage, attack, hit, injure. Possibly even go to the level of killing someone in states of anger. But when you're sitting, you're less likely to do that. Look at the hikmah. That came from Allah and His Messenger sallallahu A man once said from the Salaf, I thought about what the Prophet sallallahu said, and I realized that anger combines all kinds of evil. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said, لا تغذب ولك الجنة He said, do not become angry and Jannah will be yours. Do not become angry. It is natural for us to get some type of anger in every way, male, female, young, old. But controlling it is what truly will make you powerful and truly make you from the inhabitants of Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله عز وجل تلك الجنة التي نورث من عبادنا من كان تقيا. Allah says what means such is the paradise that we shall give as inheritance to those of our slaves who have been from the muttaqun, who have been pious and righteous. And you won't find someone upon piety and righteousness who is getting angry every other minute. So remember what Allah has promised to those who have taqwa. Jannah, gardens with rivers flowing underneath. Struggle with yourself and fight that anger. And remember this reward and inshallah you can extinguish that, that anger. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever controls his anger at a time when he can act upon it, Allah will fill his heart with contentment on the day of resurrection. That day, يَوْمَنْ كَانَ مَخْدَارُ وَخَمْسِينَ أَلْفَسَنَةً It's 50,000 years long. The sun overhead, no shade except for the shade of Allah under his arsh, under his throne. A day of fear, a day of punishment, a day of torment. Yet Allah can give you contentment and peace on that day. Why? Because you just controlled your anger in this life. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قذم غيظا وهو قادر على أن ينفذه دعاه الله على على رؤوس الخلائق يوم القيامة حتى يخيره في أي الحور شاء في أي الحور شاء. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the authentic hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Abi, da- Abi Dawood, <coughs> he said, whoever controls his anger at a time when he has the means to act upon it, like a father against his children, or a husband against his wife, or a wife against her husband or her children, or anybody who's in a position of power over some others, and they can take their anger out on them, you as a, a boss or an employer, and then you take it out on your employee. This all falls under those categories. Whoever is in a position to take their anger out on somebody and act upon it, but they don't do so, then Allah will call them out before all of mankind on the day of resurrection, and they can pick from the Hur al Ain, from the righteous maidens of paradise, anyone that they want. Anybody that they want. Ya ibad Allah. Resisting anger is from the signs of righteousness, the signs of piety, the signs of goodness. As we said, Allah loves the good doers. From their characteristics, refraining from letting their anger go and forgiving and pardoning people, letting it go, letting things slide. This life is too short to keep holding grudges and to keep things over people's heads. Let things go. Brothers and sisters in faith as servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something to follow and emulate. An action of the muhsin, the good doer, that, the good, that they will have good character and fear Allah. As Allah said, وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ As Allah said, what means, and verily whoever shows patience, whoever forgives, that would truly be from the things recommended by Allah and loved by Allah. That you forgive. That you show patience, 
and that you take everything with a grain of salt. Anger is part of everyone's human way, and it rages from shaitan. And he adds fuel to it because it will only take you away from Allah and His pleasure. As brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to remind ourselves of these reminders. Once Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, he reported that a man sought permission, permission to speak to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, and he said, O son of al-Khattab, you're not giving as much and you're not judging fairly between us. Umar radiallahu anhu, of course, this angered him. And he got upset and very mad. And he was about to attack this man until Al-Hur ibn Qais radiallahu anhu, he was one of the ones present. He said, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Allah said to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa'amur bil'urf, wa'arid an al-jahileen. He told Umar ibn Khattab, the second best in this ummah, after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he told him, O oh, son of al-Khattab, show for, remember what Allah said, show forgiveness. This is part of you letting go of that anger. To forgive, even if someone wrongs you in the worst of ways. And enjoying what is good. Enjoying what is good, what is wholesome, what is pure. From tawheed all the way down to good manners, good character, modesty, and the likes. And turn away from the foolish. The ones who are foolish, who argue with you, who fight you, who slander you, who curse you. Turn away from them, you don't need their stuff. They are foolish, do not even punish them. By Allah, Umar radiallahu anhu, when he heard this from Al-Hur being recited, this ayah was recited to him, he calmed down and he was from the best to implement the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, anger has very bad effects on our bodies, on our hearts, on our souls, and of course on others. You may say harmful words, obscenities, foul language. You may even physically attack someone to the point of severely harming them or killing them. Social disasters result. Families become dysfunctional. Fear, divorce become the topic of everyday life that even the kids are uncertain with every single day. Many people, they get divorced in moments of rage and moments of anger, often with the biggest losses being to the children. And how many times have we seen anger destroy a family or lead to loss of love and compassion between the husband and the wife, which is mutual and should go both ways. And you see it lead to the love, loss of love and compassion within the family itself. Thus, Shaytan, he's pleased. Remembering that hadith where Shaytan, his throne is on water. And every morning he sends out his soldiers, go and cause the children of Adam to sin. Go and cause them to commit zina, to steal, to lie, to slander, to backbite, to take intoxicants and do all this. And they return to Iblis at the end of the day, to Shaitan at the end of the day. And he tells them when they come back and says, I caused such and such to do this sin. He said, Ma sana'ata shay'a. You've done nothing. And these are big sins. And he's saying you've done nothing. Till comes back the one, Shaitan. And he tells him, I caused the husband and wife to separate. I caused there to be division in the home. I caused it, and what fueled that typically? Anger, and it made it spiral out of control. He said, Ni'ma anta, you're the one who's done good. And shaitan, he embraces this one. This shaitan, this other sh from the shayateen, he embraces him and says, you're the one who's done a good job today. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, anger, it rages from the shaitan. And we must control it before we continue to see destruction after destruction within ourselves, within our families, within our communities, and within the Ummah at large. I will say this, Astaghfirullah li wa lakum, and Allah will give you the truth. Inna alhamdulillah, na'hamaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, some of the Salaf said that Abdullah ibn Mubarak رحمه الله would say the world is a believer's prison. And the best action in prison is patience and to control one's anger. The believer has no country in this world. 
his land, his <laughs> land will be there tomorrow in the akhirah, in the afterlife. It was also said to Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahimahullah, gather us good manners in brief, summarize good manners to us. And he said, keep away from anger. Anger is what spoils good character, what spoils good manners, what spoils good, good behavior. And this was what was advised by them. One of the Salaf used to say, Allah, one of you might see his own faults, but he still loves himself. But then he looks at his Muslim brother with suspicion, and he gets angry with him. So where is the logic in this? Ja'far ibn Muhammad, rahimahullah, he said, anger is the key to all evil. Anger is the key to all evil. So many of us, we see khamr, intoxicants, drugs, alcohol, and we're like, this is khamr, this is all evil, because we know it's Umm al-Khaba'at, it's the mother of all evils. You can't touch it, you can't sell it, buy it, process it, everything, sit where it's being uh, consumed, etc. Yet we ignore anger, and it too is the cause of all evil, it is the key to all evil. Abu Wa'il al qas he said, we entered upon Urwa ibn Muhammad ibn Sa'adi, and a man spoke to him and made him angry. So he stood up and he performed the wudu, and he returned and performed the wudu. And he then returned and he performed the wudu, and he said, my father told me on the authority of his grandfather, Atiyah, who reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِنَّ الْغَضَبْ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ خُلِقَ مِنَ النَّارِ وَإِنَّمَا and this is an authentic hadith. The Prophet he said, anger comes from the devil, from shaitan. And shaitan, the devil, was created from fire. And fire is extinguished, extinguished with water. So when you become angry, go and make wudu. Go and use that water and make the wudu and prepare yourself like you would for prayer. So that that anger could leave you. And Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu he said, "Ma shay'in athqalu fi fi mizan al mu'min yom al qiyama min khulqin hasanin, wa inna Allah la yada ghadu wa inna Allah la yada ghadu al fahish bil al badi." Afwan al fahish al badi. This hadith, which is Sahih in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, nothing is heavier on the scales of the believer on the Day of Judgment than good character. For indeed, Allah the Most High, He's angered by shameless, obscene persons. And when you're angry, what do we see? The wife, the husband, the children, the parents, the brothers, the sisters being called the worst of names that you wouldn't even say to the worst of the disbelievers that you meet in the, on, on the face of the, the earth or the streets. And you're saying those names, calling those labels, putting those labels on another Muslim brother or sister from your own family or your, your own brotherhood or sister in Islam. Abu Umama, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقَّةِ وَبِبَيْتٍ فِي وَسَطِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْكَذِبِ وَإِنْ كَانَ مَازِحَ وَبِبَيْتٍ فِي أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ حَسَّنَ خُلَقَ خُلَقَهُ This hadith which is Hassan by Shaykh Al-Albani in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I'm a guarantor of a house in the surroundings of paradise, of Jannah, for a man who avoids quarreling and arguing even when he is right. And for a house in the middle of paradise for a man who avoids lying even if it's to tell a joke. And I am a guarantor for a house in the upper parts of paradise, near the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for a man who, who was a man of good character, who had good character and behavior and manners and morals. And lastly, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ جُرْعَةٍ أَعْظَمُ أَجْرًا أَعْظَمُ أَجْرًا عند الله من جرعة غيد قضمها عبد ابتغاء وجه الله This hadith which Shaykh al-Albani he also authenticated in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah. He said that the Messenger of Allah said there is nothing swallowed 
with a greater reward from Allah than a servant who swallows his rage, than a person who swallows his anger. When you control your anger, don't think you're the weak one. Don't think the other guy won. Don't think someone got the upper hand over you. Listen to this hadith. Sheikh Al-Bani, he authenticated it. There is nothing swallowed with a greater reward from Allah than a servant who swallows his or her rage. You just keep that rage to yourself so that you get rid of it. And you don't act upon it. Seeking thereby the countenance or the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anger without a doubt is a disease. Shaitan, he runs through the veins. And we see the destruction it's doing. So let us all vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to work on our anger. And of course, I advise myself first, this comes upon every person. The young, the old, now you see these kids raging over a video game. And they're taught anger and how it's funny or whatever it may be from that young age. Because of what they look to idolize on this YouTube and stuff like that. So be mindful of these things. At least condemn it with your tongue. Be mindful of that anger. Sit down if you're standing. Lay down if it's not working. Make wudu. Go and wash like you would for salah. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Fight that anger like it's your biggest enemy. Because behind it is our biggest enemy, and that is Shaitan. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله